Welcome back. I am here with an amazing woman. I know you are going to love her as much as I do. Sue Wall and I met, we haven't figured out how many years ago, but I am here on the Upper West Side of Manhattan and have the amazing opportunity to interview Sue up close, in person, <laughs> right? And this is our first in-person interview since March, 2020, if you can believe it. So it's so exciting to just sit next to someone. I agree with you completely. <laughs> and I'm honored to participate in this series. Oh, that you do. It's, it's, been, it's been such a wild ride, right? For all of us. Yes, absolutely. But the opportunity to bring amazing people to our our good day community in a way that we couldn't have done it if we needed to bring everyone in studio. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity just continues now because as we travel to new and different places, the great opportunities are to get up close and personal with the people we want to spotlight and, and share. So Sue is an artist. She is an artist in the truest <laughs> form and she is a painter. And so this show as I said to you earlier, these shows come together very organically mm -hmm. under an umbrella of some theme. Mm -hmm. And this show in particular is art as dot, dot, dot. So we have art as food, art as fashion, art as art. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and in our traditional sense of understanding and expecting art, that's where you really shine. And I, and I have to say that knowing your art and sharing that with our community now is great, but I also want to give them a little bit of a background as mm -hmm. to how you got here. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about you? Okay. My earliest childhood memory was at age three and I did my first painting. That's what I'm remembering. And my father had drained the oil out of the car and there was a tub of this black liquid next to the side of a white garage and a broom was nearby and i dipped the broom and made my painting on the garage wall oh much to my parents <laughs> horror <laughs> I, say, I don't think they would appreciate they were not that. happy <laughs> but i had a wonderful grandmother it was my mother's mother who was a strong, independent, creative woman in her own right. And she decided I better buy this girl some paints. So I started painting right after that. And I've never stopped. I try to paint literally seven days a week. And if I'm traveling, I paint with my eyes and my soul. But it's my language. It's my, my vocabulary. And it's actually why I think I'm here. That's incredible and obviously you have a community and a following mm -hmm. who have grown with you over mm -hmm. the years so you're originally not from new york i'm from cleveland ohio uh -huh. i lived there until my last day of high school and then i made a beeline to ohio university which is where i stayed mm -hmm. for a number of years i did a bachelor's degree in ceramics and painting and a master's in printmaking and painting but i started making trips to new york as a freshman by the time i finished school and was ready to move I knew New York like it was already my home and I was already showing at a Madison Avenue gallery, which made it easy to do the transition. I had artist friends here already to have dialogues with and it was the easiest move, really. People asked, how could you move to a big city like that? But it already felt like a collection of small neighborhoods mm -hmm. and the Upper West Side was definitely where I wanted to be. That I remember that feeling as well. I had 11 apartments in and around Manhattan when uh -huh. I was deciding where to live. I would take these short-term sublets just to scope out the different neighborhoods mm -hmm. and then finally landed for most of my years on the mm -hmm. Upper West Side. So I totally understand. And when you feel someplace is home, you're just there. Absolutely. But there's always been a great art scene and, and culture scene in the city. Mm -hmm. So I can totally see what would draw you in. But for so many years. And a lot of people just tire of New York over time, but you don't, it seems to no. still compel you. All of the things that first excited me still excite me. I love going to ballet and 
concerts, opera, chamber music, and all the museums. I go to the Metropolitan Museum at least once a week. And it's all of these things are within walking distance because yeah. I'm on the Upper West Side. Yeah. So I walk through the park to go to the museum and it's just, the whole experience is nurturing. The walk, the mm -hmm. museum, and then coming back to my studio with all this infusion of fine energy. That that's exactly where you should be, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. where everyone should be. I would love for everyone to be able to say that about mm -hmm. wherever they live. But yesterday on the way up here, I passed uh, the Museum of Art and Design, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorites. Yes. It's tiny and mm -hmm. it's so personal, not to mention a fabulous restaurant on the rooftop, but they have a special exhibit now of garmenting as fashion, yes. as art. I've seen it and, several times. And I just had to go back and see it because again, it all feeds into this theme of art in every aspect of our lives. Yes. So your art is very, it's very literal. Mm -hmm. I would say that's different than what we're talking about with fashion as art or food as art, but painting and our traditional notion of art as art mm -hmm. is really where I think you have stood out from the crowd. And that's why after all these years, mm -hmm. you have still so many exhibitions going on everywhere. Tell me what brought you to the kind of art that you do. And we're going to show mm -hmm. a number of your pieces mm -hmm. on the screen while mm -hmm. we talk. Well, when I was in high school and I was very passionate about painting already, I knew I wanted to go to college and I knew my parents wouldn't be able to pay for that. So I found a fabulous job, hand coloring with oil paint, sepia toned portraits from a photography studio. It paid by the piece, it paid very well. And in three years, I had all the money for one year of college. And from then on, I got full tuition scholarships. So I was very fortunate. And it was the first time I learned that art could be a profession, that there were like-minded people who were as passionate about art as I was. I had never met an artist before I went there. And they really took me under my wing, uh, under their wing. Ohio University has an amazing art department, still does. I'm still in touch with many people there. And my painting and ceramic professors opened up their studios to me, invited me to their homes to talk about art. It was a profound experience, very different than how I imagined college would be. It, I felt very much at home. It was hard to leave to, to move here, mm -hmm. but I was ready. Well, and I think that's a question that many, many young people ask themselves now is, this is what I love to do and this is what I'm good at, but can it be my profession? Mm -hmm. Can I actually make a living doing this mm -hmm. moving forward? So I think that's a, that's a very compelling concept that as the leader, as the teacher, as the mentor, mm -hmm. showing the next generation what is possible. Mm -hmm. And I've always said, even in the world of image and style, that there are no boundaries, mm -hmm. that as creative as you can be, that's your opportunity to create your space within an industry that has no walls. We are limited by our imagination. Mm -hmm. And if we can give that free reign and be passionate and have the time and energy to devote to it without distractions, right. then I think really we can pretty much do what we want. And I believe it takes a little bit of effort to design the life that we mm -hmm. want, which you have done with great intention. Mm -hmm. And I want to share this with our audience because I think most people have forgotten that it's possible to actually keep your life simple mm -hmm. and not filled with the distraction and the noise that most of us experience on mm -hmm. a daily basis, especially when you're living in, <laughs> in New York yes. City. So you've done that in some very special ways. You want to share some of that? Well, it's something I rethink periodically to reevaluate because I'm I'm changing and growing and so what made sense last year may not make sense mm -hmm. this year so it's a continuous evaluation process on my part but what I want is simplicity in my life I want to wake up in the morning wander down the hallway into my studio and play basically it's almost childlike mm 
you know, almost like coloring. It, it's, it's joyous. And I need time and space to have that. If I only have an hour to work, I won't be able to achieve that kind of getting out of the way and just watching it evolve. So it's um, more of a meditative experience. It's very meditative. So in order to have that simplicity, one of the choices I made was to not have any electronic devices that there are exceptions. I have a little flip phone <laughs> that isn't a computer that I can make calls and receive calls. And I have a Bose radio so I can hear news and it has the ability to play one CD at a time. So I have a large library of classical music that I listen to while I paint. And that's your backdrop. That's my backdrop. But there's no TV, there's no computer, there's no smartphone, no iPad, no email to answer. So as you're hearing, if you are interested in learning more about Sue, you're going to have to call her or send a postal letter to a mailing address. And that alone is, is something that I think most people have forgotten actually exists. Well, well, I, I always communicate with handwritten letters, literally mm -hmm. handwritten. On, by you with by your hands. hand with my hand. <laughs> and I get calls like, I can't remember the last time I got a handwritten letter. Yeah. Thank you so much. As, as if it was something special. But for me, it is my mode of communication. Well, yeah. I, and I thank you for that because that intentionality, that opportunity to honor what really works for you mm -hmm. is something that a lot of us struggle with on mm -hmm. a daily basis. So when we were talking about this, I really felt that this was an important part of the conversation mm -hmm. because when you're doing art, especially of any kind, mm -hmm. I know musicians, uh, actors, chefs, everyone wants to quiet the world mm -hmm. around them in order to be in their selves yes. and be in that present moment. But many of us don't mm -hmm. consider not having uh, mm -hmm. the latest technology around us. So it's just another way to operate. A little game I play with myself in my own reevaluation process is to contemplate for a moment, if this were my last day here, how would I end the sentence, if only I had? And I know it's not going to be if only I had a computer or a television or email. I know it's going to be, if only I could have done just a few more paintings, and if only I could have spent more time with loved ones, if only I could have said I love you one more time, and technology would not exist within that realm whatsoever. Okay, then it doesn't have to. <laughs> and I am going to send our viewers to your website, which by the way, is not interactive. Again, if you see something you love, or you want to connect with Sue about a commission of any kind, mm -hmm. then the way to do it is to pick up the phone and actually talk to her. And so as you can see, it's a pleasure to do that. And I think any one of us would be better for it. So Sue, what is the website address? It's suewallstudio.com. And I do have to say that part of being enabled to live the life that I have is the generosity and kindness of friends. Just the fact that we are able to do this today is an example of kindness and generosity. And the fact that my website exists is kindness and generosity. Uh, the person who does it is amazing. So. Well, everyday gratitude is definitely something we mm -hmm. need more of and certainly can dig a little deeper in ourselves for. So I'm so glad you shared that too. So Sue's art, as you'll see, is amazing Victorian homes, animal portraits, and other kind of artifact paintings. Yes, yes. So, I, I've traveled the world in my apartment is like an international pack rat's nest. <laughs> and I pick things that I live with and juxtapose them. Uh, countries that are at war can be at peace in my home through the objects that they've made. And I know we talked earlier about some of the most popular commissions are these very 
small mm -hmm. but meaningful portraits of pets mm -hmm. and i loved how you described it is really the bust of the pet right the head and a shoulders. a formal portrait head and shoulders like if john singer Sargent were here and you <laughs> wanted a portrait but um the beauty of the intimacy of the size is that you can hold it in your hand. It is intimate. You can put it on a table on a little easel. You can lean it in a bookcase. If you have multiple pets, you can have a grouping of their individual portraits. And I like the intimacy of that. Yeah, you know? I like that too. And the intimacy of your work in general, the fact that it is very literal mm -hmm. and that you're looking at someone's home mm -hmm. or you're looking at the environment and the gardens or you're looking at the pet mm -hmm. um, who's looking back at you. Yes, I paint so, the eyes first so someone is looking at me. <laughs> that's exactly how it feels. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining you're us today. Welcome. Thank and you. I hope you will check out Sue's site because even if you just go visit and peruse the beautiful work, it will enhance your day. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Thank you.